Aloha, you're watching F5. We're here in San Francisco for RSA 2015. I'm Peter Silva, and I'm thrilled to have our worldwide security evangelist, David Holmes with us. David, nice to see you. Great to see you, Pete. Now you might not know this, but David has been a long time F5 employee, he worked in our product development organization for a number of years, and you're actually responsible for a number of our security implementations within the Big IP system, aren't you, Dave? That's right, I've been at F5 for 15 years, and I was a security programmer. I've been in security for like 26 years now. And part of that goes back to when I was younger, my parents told me I could be anyone I wanted when I grew up. Turns out that's called identity theft. <laughs> well, so you've been working on a project recently, really around SSL, uh -huh. and um, can you tell us a little bit about like why organizations are starting to make a real push into sure. SSL? Sure, sure. There's a lot of initiatives like Google's uh, um, uh, SSL Everywhere or SSL uh, um, All the Time or Always On, and it really is because that's the only security protocol that we really have globally, right? There was mm -hmm. always IPsec before, but you had to be sort of part of the group in order to get that uh, a chain of trust. So really, SSL is, is all we have anymore. And that's what has always fascinated me about it, is because we have this one single protocol. And um, I've always thought that F5 probably terminates some enormous amount of the world's traffic, right? Because all the Fortune 500 are our customers. Yep. Um, so the world's top, many of the world's top uh, websites, busiest websites are F5 customers. So uh, over the summer, I built a scanner uh -huh. um, based on, uh, partly on input from Project Sonar's data. Um, uh, to basically go out and scan the internet and find big IPs, uh, simply because I, I used to work on the SSL code. So of course I would know when I'm talking to uh, a big IP device and then get a count of what they're doing. And then I started sort of filling in the metrics of what the security posture is. And I just ran the latest scan so, this morning. It just finished this morning. So before we get to those amazing numbers, but <laughs> what, what exactly were you looking for? Were you just looking for big IPs out there or you were actually looking for big IPs that were terminating SSL? And really, so you knew that they were encrypting the connection. Sure, really just concerned about SSL. Right? Okay. I mean, we do, we and everybody else do a ton of traffic as well, but I also had the sense that more and more traffic is going to be encrypted um, and, then, and then we might see more and more big IPs out there. Got it, okay. So then what did you find? So I've got three stats to share with you, and literally, I, right before I put on my suit, I grabbed the latest numbers. Uh, and I wanted hot to talk- off the presses. Uh, hot off the presses. So there was, uh, there's three that I want to talk about, and the okay. first one is forward secrecy. And that is the, um, it's, a, it's a cryptographic technique that solves this specific problem. So let's say Pete is involved with some shady uh, server out there uh, for, uh, and, and the, the feds, they or not some nation state, <laughs> let's say, is interested in what he has to say to the server. So he will, um, so they're, they're trying to snoop on it, but they can't crack the server key because it's 2048-bit encryption. Um, so what they do is they record every transmission they have between the two of them, between Pete and the server, for five years. And then they, uh, when the server goes to get recycled, they take it down to the recycle place, they hand bring it in to make sure it gets recycled, but right before it goes in the machine, the nation state pulls it out, uh, and, and they grab the key and they decrypt everything, everything that you've I've been, done over the last right, five years. And then you disappear. Um, so forward secrecy solves that problem by um, uh, basically double encrypting every, every connection so that even if somebody recovers the key forward in the future, yep. they can't decrypt all those keys. So uh, the latest stats this morning show that uh, just over a third of the internet has already switched over to forward secrecy. Wow. Um, for F5 users, the percentage has doubled, but it's still quite low. Um, and there's, there's good reasons for that. Uh, forward secrecy is really good if you're, if you're worried about surveillance from, a, from a, uh, a nation state or something, uh, like a really big actor. But if you're really just trying to do e-commerce and you're trying to keep a website up and running, forward secrecy has its issues. And then it adds, um, it adds a performance hit, so you've got to throw more compute at it or more machines at it. And also it can uh, complicate your monitoring system. So if you have any kind of monitoring system that depends on a key, a shared key, that's not gonna work. Or if you ever intend to do SSL dump later to figure out why can't my user log in, that won't work either. Right, because they're blind asses right. to that particular yeah. piece of traffic. Now you mentioned a third is going perfect forward secrecy on your latest round. Yeah, of the uh, internet as a whole. Right, and uh, what is that compared to say earlier scans? Was it much lower oh, than? Oh, that's a great question. So when I started scanning over the summer, it was just under a third. So it's not like rocketing. I, th I think there was a huge ramp up, maybe when Apache released the first uh, 
whatever uh, version that's supported forward secrecy by default, and that it's just sort of, sort of been going as, as oh, older machines get replaced. Okay. So what about your second stat? Uh, the second one is something called strict transport security. And that solves this one particular problem. Suppose, remember in the old days when you told your browser to go to your bank and you would just put in Chase or Wells Fargo or whatever, mm -hmm. and you wouldn't say HTTPS? It would send an HTTP request, which anybody could see or tamper with, uh, to the server. And the server would get it and he would say, uh, could you please come, he would redirect you back and say, please come back with HTTPS. Yep. Well, Moxie Marlin Spike uh, wrote a tool called SSL Strip, which takes that little S off of the redirect. So when your browser comes back around, it gives you the, uh, the username, password, and the clear. In the right? clear and again. he grabs it. Um, neat little tool. Anyway, um, the solution for that is a header called strict transport security. It's very easy to put in, but up until now, it's been an I rule that you have to, a very simple I rule, JSON ROM at Dev Central. It's 14 lines of, of I rule. Um, and that is, here's the, the thing that, uh, it's not being used by anybody, mm -hmm. by anybody at all. The internet at large is, it's like, I don't know, less than 1% or 3%, I okay. can't remember, without looking at my notes, but it's minuscule. And it's the same for big IP users. And actually, if you were to ask me, David, which should I turn on forward secrecy or strict trans transport security, I would say strict transport security any day over forward secrecy for your business needs. Yeah. Um, uh, so we, we have a suspicion that it's because it's an I rule and not everyone's using I rules so they got other priorities. So we're making a checkbox in the next version of Big IP. Nice. Yep. So that'll help them protect against, pr protecting right. against those sorts of attacks. Right. And then you had a third statistic, oh, the third I one, believe. The third one. Um, so, uh, support for SSL v3, right? Really? That's the old, the old standard, which was good for a while, but um, uh, it's sort of on its way out ever since the Poodle attack. And just coincidentally, I started my scans right before Poodle. So I actually have data from before Poodle and, and data up to now. So if you look at SSL v3 prior to the Poodle attack, which I think was September, the last calendar quarter of last year, about 98% of the internet supported v3. Okay. Right? Only 2% or even less than 2% required uh, um, the next versions. We would think of them as like 4, 5, and 6, but they're actually TLS 1, 1, 1, and 1, 2. 1, 2. Um, after Poodle, the quarter after Poodle, it had dropped to 44% across the internet, wow. which is actually amazing if you think about it. That's 10 million servers turning off a major protocol. Um, and so the latest number this morning was it was down to mid 30s. Wow. From, from my samples. So and all in response to the Poodle vulnerability. I think, yes, all in response to Poodle. Interesting. So, so fantastic stuff. So if somebody said, well, David, should I, for my business, turn off SSL v3? Um, it, it's not nearly a, a big a concern as strict transport security. For example, Google, who found Poodle, they still run v3. It's really more of a browser issue. Yeah. Is, your, is your browser trying to do v3, or does your browser support v3? Um, and so because of that, you may not necessarily be inclined to turn it off, because if you, especially if you have legitimate traffic from China or some other place that uses a lot of v3 traffic, maybe leave it on for a while. And I believe there's a Dev Central article, if you wanted to dive deeper, you can still mitigate Poodle in some other ways. And people can find a lot about your, your, your reporting on these on a regular basis as you find um, as you do new scans and get new reports, you've been reporting about this on Dev Central. Every, yeah, every now and then. I don't yeah. have like a cool published report yet, but I'm working on it. Okay, look forward to the published report. Great stuff on SSL, David. I, had, I knew you were working on this project, but it's really cool to hear some of the outcomes and the statistics, and you're going to keep doing this for a little while now? I plan to. Cool. So a lot more about not only SSL, the, our SSL implementation, but also how SSL is actually being deployed in the wild, really? and uh, how to mitigate some of the vulnerabilities tied to SSL. Always fun talking with you, Dave, one of my favorite F5ers. So for Dave, I got Swanti and Jeff behind the lens. Thanks, guys. I'm Peter, and we're with F5 Networks. Thanks for watching.